Newfoundland Hobbyist is sponsored by Paul'sFinest.com, Mid Island Motorsports located in Springdale, WildMedKits.ca, and Robinson's General Store located in Middle Arm. If you've been watching the Newfoundland Hobbyist long enough, then you will remember this workshop I'm standing in right here. That is the dark, drafty workshop with no insulation, no heat source, and consequently very cold in the winter time. I figured it was time to change things up. We got a new workshop! That's right, and let me show you how we got here. In the spring of 2020, I was presented with the opportunity to purchase my childhood home. Now as you can see here, the home has an attached garage or workshop that was only ever used for wood storage and hence never developed any further. I decided to make this into my workshop and I got to work quickly. Filling those walls with insulation was very rewarding considering the cold winters I had spent in years past, I took every measure to make this shop airtight. After the walls were insulated, I began sheeting everything over with asponite. Given the nasty spring weather, a lot of my stuff had to be inside the workshop already, which made it a little bit difficult having to work around all the stuff. As with any renovations, a certain amount of deconstruction has to happen first. I simply needed to unattach these shark bite fittings so I could pull the valve through the wall. Now I had already supposedly shut off the water line that's feeding into this so I have the bucket here just to catch the bit of water that's draining or that's going to drain from the line so that was a little bit more messy than I was expecting a little more pressure on the line but I'll just hold my bucket here and wait for it to drain off. My bucket is now half full of water and filling really fast and I just realized that this line is not stopping. This line is still wide open. Well, I was not expecting that. I put the bucket there because I figured it would be a little bit extra 
runoff, but... Oh. Now to finish removing that difficult valve, I was able to get back to removing the sheeting so we could do some replacements and repairs. Thankfully, I had Dad's help with the labor, and I borrowed a sheet lifter from a local contractor to help sheet the ceiling. And now with that ceiling sheeted over, I took every measure to ensure that ceiling was insulated. Again, I want to be warm this winter. Trim work helped case in a window and finish off all the edges around the shop just to give everything a nice clean look. No matter what your hobby, whether it be quilting, drawing, or carving wood, a good quality space is very important. You need to have a space to carry out that work. And I find that a good organized workshop or space built to your needs really helps keep you continuously creative. It's especially nice if you can have a dedicated location so you don't always have to put your work away. Uh, whether that's woodworking so you can leave your project and your tools out, whether it's quilting and you have a table or a room in the house that you can set aside and leave your material out your sewing machine so you don't need to put it away all the time it really helps to have that kind of space Now with all our trim complete, it's time to clean up a lot of that mess so we can get to some paint. Have a look at that. Wow. She's coming along. Flat white going on first, so I'll start by trimming. With a wide, I've got a three inch brush there, nice and coarse. And if you've ever mixed a gallon of paint by hand, you'd want one of these. I bought one of these uh, well, just several weeks ago before I bought the house, and it is so nice on a drill. Just <laughs> it saves a lot of mixing. It gets the paint up from the bottom all the paint and oils and stuff up from the bottom which is it takes a long time to do with just a stir stick I find it doesn't leave a ton of mess either I give it a little spin out not too much speed because you can have a huge mess like this especially inside your house and I'll just dunk it in the water 
give it a little spin out in the water and then I'll just leave it sitting there in the water and the, just a little spin like that really cleans it up that is some thick paint right there Fresh wood is quite thirsty and I ended up using 7 gallons of paint to properly coat the shop. I chose a flat finish paint for the first coat just since it was half the cost and I did a finish coat with semi gloss being a lot more resistant to grabbing onto dirt. It'll be cleaner in the long run. Newfoundland Hobbyists is sponsored by EdgeProInc.com, ABS Bussing, Middle Arm, By the Sea Inn and Cafe located in Kings Point, and Nobles Timmermere with locations in Springdale and Bay Vert. The floor that I'm standing on here is actually asphalt and it was a driveway originally when the house was built. A workshop or a garage walls were built over that after so this workshop or, or space has always had an angled and asphalt paved floor. It's time to get rid of that. It certainly won't be suitable for a workshop. You don't want to break, eh? Hey? Oh, there we go. This base is roughly 24 feet deep and it had an elevation change of about 2 feet from the front to the back. So quite a bit of digging was required to level this pad out.
That's nice, huh? How nice is that? Beautiful, beautiful. That's it right there. After all that digging and leveling, I was actually down below the pre-existing knee wall, which means a new knee wall has to be poured to support the gravel. Ah, the electrical. Perhaps my favorite part of the whole project. In the old workshop, I worked for three years off of extension cords, moving from tool to tool all day long. I had dreamt about having a workshop tailored to my needs regarding electrical for a long time. I haven't done a lot of electrical wiring in my life anyways, but this is the first time I've ever been around BX cable. When I was looking at wiring solutions for the shop, I was... Uh, thinking conduit was the best solution because I did want my wiring outside the walls for a couple of reasons. I want easy access to be able to move things and change it as the shop evolved or as I might need to add on. And I also wanted sort of that industrial look of conduit or the wiring outside the walls. Now, I was advised by a couple different electricians including Cody that conduit was not the best solution. So, per their recommendation, I went with what's called BX cable, or steel braided cable, external to the walls, 
all cans are outside and I could not be happier with the result. We have two plugs here running out from inside. Those are those these two are on its own circuit. 20 amps. We have a 240 plug there for a welder. I will also come off with another 240 that'll go in that can there for the grinder later on. It's not done yet. Uh, we have a circuit right here that runs off the switch. This will run around for a light in my grinding room, which will be that corner along with two plug-ins and that's where our lights will come off of. Another circuit, 20 amp all 12 2 wire comes out here and we have plug, 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 plug and plug. So tons of receptacles in the shop. Notice we have a double receptacle here in the grinding room so I'll be able to run lots of stuff. Um, if I keep my grinder on uh, 120 for a little while, I can plug in, I can plug in a, a dust collector, or air exchanger, shop vac, whatever tools I want, I can plug in in my grinding room and it'll be all set up real nice. I just put in a standard light here and like I said, double receptacles here or what is it, duplex they call it, duplex receptacle. We have two, my strings of lights will run off there. And I'll be able to control all the lights with this switch right here. There's power to it all. I've tested it, but I, I've tested it with just, um, just my little circuit tester or whatever, but I have not actually ran everything off of it yet. So let's see here, I need to charge up the compressor to blow off some of my chop line. It's the first time. Let's go with the very last plug in this circuit. Ooh, those are fresh plugs. Let's see. I hope you guys are enjoying the project okay. so far. I am so thrilled to be finally building a space to my specifications, to exactly my needs and I thank you for watching. I have to thank my sponsors so much for making this show possible. If at all possible, please go ahead and support them. And as always, make sure you tune in next week to the Newfoundland Hobbyist.